Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden in the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. It keeps you on the loop with everything you need to know from pop, rock, hip hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further because this is the gold standard in music podcast. Thank you for listening to the GSMC Music Podcast. Brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Kaylika Brown, the music lover constantly seeking positive music. If you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe to our show on your preferred podcast platform and write a review. Those reviews do help the show. Also follow the GSMC Music Podcast on Twitter at GSMC underscore music. Now let's get into some music news. This past Sunday was the 62nd Grammy Awards. So, uh, let's talk Grammys. Lizzo opened. Uh, She had a fiery performance, but the very first lines before she even got into her song was, this is for Kobe. Then she went into a very energetic performance. The whole crew was geeked at the end of the performance because of their accomplishment, which, yeah, they did that. So y'all live in that moment. Enjoy it. She ended the performance with the words, Welcome to the Grammys, bitch. Then Alicia Keys, the host, did her welcome and acknowledged Kobe Bryant's and his daughter's death that took place that morning. And the fact that the award ceremony was at the Staples Center, the house Kobe Bryant built, she said. Boys, the men joined her in singing It's So Hard to Say Goodbye. Then the camera pans to his jerseys hanging, number eight, And number 24. Now let's talk about the winners for the major categories. Record of the Year, Bad Guy, Billie Eilish. Album of the Year, When We All Fall Asleep, Billie Eilish. Song of the Year, Billie Eilish. New Artist, Billie Eilish. So Eilish became just the second artist in Grammy history and the first woman to take home the Big Four Awards. Album, Record, and Song of the Year, plus New Artist. The first artist to do this was Christopher Cross 39 years ago. At 18 years old, Eilish is the youngest best um, new artist champion since Leanne Rimes, who was 14 when she took the 1996 award. She's the youngest song of the year winner since Lord, who was a year younger, just 17, when she won the 2013 award for co-writing Royals. When We All Fall Asleep, is the first debut album to win Album of the Year since Noah Jones's Come Away With Me in 2002. Now, Best Pop Solo, Truth Hurts, Lizzo. Best Pop Album, Billie Eilish. Best Rock Album, Social Cues by Cage the Elephant. Best Alternative Music Album, Father of the Bride by Vampire Weekend. This is their second win. The band won in 2013 for Modern Vampires of the City. They're the only act to win twice in the category in the past 10 years. Best Urban Contemporary, Cause I Love You by Lizzo. She's the third female artist to win in this category following Rihanna and Beyonce. And it seemed likely that her and Billie Eilish would split the top prizes, but in the end, Lizzo beat Eilish in just one category, Best Pop Solo Performance for Truth Hurts. Fun fact, Cross also lost in this performance category in the year of his sweep 39 years ago. Lizzo ended up taking home three Grammys, and she killed that opening number. Best R&B Album, Ventura, Anderson Pack. Best Rap Album, Tyler the Creator for Igor. Um, His prior album, Flower Boy, was nominated in this category two years ago, but he lost to Kendrick Lamar's Damn. Tyler the Creator's performance was insane. Not sure what was up with that wig, that uh, like Sia looking wig. Um, But the set, like the illusion of the set, how the houses... In that neighborhood, like, it legit looked like it was a real street. And then when, like, the dancers came out, it looked like they were, like, further down the street. I don't know. It was just crazy, that illusion. Um, They had houses on fires. And then at the very end, 
Tyler like just falls back and just drops off the stage. Um, it was pretty dope. It was pretty dope. Country album, While I'm Living, Tanya Tucker, Best Gospel Album, Long Live Love, Kirk Franklin. He won his 15th and 16th Grammy that night. Best Contemporary Christian Album, Burn the Ships, King and Country. Best Comedy Album, Stick and Stones, Dave Chappelle. Uh, Dave has won three times in a row. Chappelle is just the fourth performer in this category to win three years running. Bill Cosby won six years running and from 64 to 69. And Richard Pryor won the three in a row from 74 to 76. Best Music Video and Best Pop Duo, Lil Nas X, Old Time Road. After winning two Grammys, Lil Nas X drops a remix to Rodeo featuring iconic rapper Nas. He also brought out Big Nas during his Grammy performance. Best Rapper slash Sung performance, Sung, S-U-N-G, is higher. DJ Khaled featuring Nipsey Hussle and John Legend. Best Rap performance, Racks in the Middle, Nipsey Hussle featuring Roddy Rich. Now, um, I'm really not sure the difference between the two categories, best rap performance versus best rap slash sung performance, but I'm glad Nip was part of both the categories. The late Nipsey Hussle won his first Grammy for best rap performance for Racks in the Middle, which featured Roddy Rich and Hip Boy. His grandmother was among those accepting the award on his behalf. He later won a second Grammy for best rap sung performance for his featured role in DJ Khaled's Higher. Hustle was nominated last year for Best Rap Album from Victory Lap. He was killed six weeks later. His love, Lauren London, and grandmother accepted his award. Hearing Lauren's shaky voice was just heartbreaking. And Grandma, man, I mean, she was in the Rocks in the Middle video, just chilling in the private jet. And now she's thanking his fans for the outpour of love for her grandson. Um, my heart is still heavy. And, oh, I'm so upset. That was the one performance, the Nipsey tribute, that I was looking forward to. Like, literally the main reason why I was watching it. <laughs> and I missed it. And then I couldn't even find, like, a recap online. Like, I, uh, mm, Hulu Live. <laughs> no shout-outs to Hulu Live on that. Um, but it did look like they also put up Kobe Bryant's face on the big screen, too, along with Nipsey. Uh, during that performance. So let's talk more about the performances of the night. Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton. Um, I mean, Gwen looks lovely in her heart design dress and red lipstick. And I can just feel the love as they stared into each other's eyes singing, don't want to love nobody but you. Jonas Brothers, I told you um, a while back, um, I think one of the past episodes, how like I low key was like hating on him. Really? I mean, I was just too old to really be a fan. But I respect those dudes now after watching their documentary, and they were all looking good in that gold and black. Um, they were accompanied by a big band and dancers. It was just a super fun, like, make you want to dance performance. Um, they did What a Man Gotta Do, and then they teased on Ellen that they were going to do something special, which ended up being Five More Minutes, uh, the song that's unreleased right now. Usher, Sheila E., and FKA Twigs did a Prince tribute. I mean, Usher's moves are just smooth as ever. FKA, um, her pole dancing was just flawless. Super jelly on that. And just her body strength, man. Uh, fans were disappointed that she didn't sing. And I was curious as to why she didn't either. And she addressed it on Twitter. She said, of course, I wanted to sing at the Grammys. I wasn't asked this time, but hopefully in the future. Nonetheless, what an honor. Congrat congrat uh, congratulations to all the winners, she wrote. Sheila E., as always, was dope on the drums. It was just a cool tribute. Ariana Grande, she gets me hyped in the same way Christina Aguilar used to. Or Aguilera, I don't know why I keep messing up her name. <laughs> but um, my respect for her just continues to grow. I'm with her. I never heard of them, but they were super dope. I'm super skilled musicians. I rock with anyone who can get down on a violin. Camilla Cabello singing First Man to Her Dad with the home video footage playing in the background pulled at my This Is Us heartstrings. Um, and Demi Lovato performed live for the first time in nearly two years. She debuted a new song, Anyone, 
which she wrote and recorded just four days before suffering an overdose in July 2018. The single will reportedly be included on Lovato's upcoming album. So that wraps up Grammy night. When we return, we'll have more news and new releases. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Welcome back. Let's get into some music news and new releases. So Compton rapper YG was arrested at his home Friday on robbery charges. The game was highly upset about the arrest, which came just days before the Grammys where YG was set to perform during a tribute to Nipsey Hussle. The game told TMZ they know that YG was supposed to be on the Grammys. The Grammys gave explicit an opportunity to put on for Nip and, of course, the LAPD. The LAPD, they gonna come through and hate Wake a man up after he been through everything he been through at 4 a.m. in the morning, taking him to jail when he excelling in life. That is trash. Knocking on doors, taking this man away from his kid during a celebratory weekend for Nip. Uh, those are all his words <laughs> that he posted on social. So yeah, YG was taken into custody on Friday morning after LA County Sheriff's deputies arrived at his home with a search warrant related to an ongoing criminal investigation involving a robbery. He was released Friday night on a $250,000 bell and is expected to appear in court on January 28th. The big bank rapper was able to perform alongside John Legend, DJ Khaled, Meek Mill, Rowdy Rich, and Kirk Franklin as part of a tribute to Nipsey Hussle. Um, I mean, I don't really know YG like that other than like he rocked with Nip and I love Nip. So, but I mean, I don't think that he's stupid enough to do any kind of robbery stuff being that dude has money. Big Bank. <laughs> he has a song called Big Bank. Why would he be doing robbery? Sounds kind of bogus. I hope it's bogus, but uh, uh, we'll find out. <laughs> I'll keep you updated as I know more. So speaking of Nip, Lauren London has revealed a first look at Puma and Marathon Clothing's new collection honoring Nipsey Hussle. The collaboration is titled Hustle and Motivate. To continuing honoring the vision and legacy of Nipsey Hussle, Puma and the Marathon Clothing are reissuing the, their debut collection together, Puma said in a statement to Newsweek. The campaign stars Nipsey's family and friends, including London and YG, as well as Nipsey's All Money In artists, Jay Stone, Killa Twan, Pac-Man, the Gunman, um, who all modeled black and red tracksuits in the promo images. London also shared another photo wearing a white tee that reads, We, the Marathon Clothing, honor, and, honor the endurance and the unwavering faith of those that never quit. Our products represent their testimony. Life is a marathon. The first Puma and TMC collection dropped in September 2019 and sold out quickly. The reissue will launch on February 1st. Got it, y'all? Be ready. February 1st at select retailers and on Puma.com and includes co-branded tracksuits and t-shirts, including checkered patterns and TMC motifs, as well as Puma's signature California sneakers in black and white. Prices will range from $40 to $100. I hope that report is accurate, because uh, usually stuff be a little bit more expensive. Um, I will go into it thinking it's going to be a little bit more than $40 to $100. But all net proceeds from the sale of the Puma and TMC collection will go directly to the Neighborhood NIP Foundation, which empowers the South Los Angeles community and neighborhoods alike across the globe. So Music Care's annual Person of the Year Gala honoring Arrow Smith took place last Friday. The event held at the ballroom at the Los Angeles Convention Center raised $6 million for the Recording Academy's philanthropic arm that aids musicians and other industry personnel in medical, emotional, and financial need. The evening had performances by key artists doing renditions of Aerosmith's songs. Here is some of the set list. 
Crazy, Jonas Brothers, Dude Looks Like a Lady, Ashley McBride, What It Takes, Gavin DeGraw, Janie's Got a Gun, Kesha, Crying, Yola and Gary Clark Jr., Living on the Edge, Leanne Rhymes, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing, John Legend, Home Tonight, Jesse J, Let the Music Do the Talking, Foo Fighters, Toys in the Attic, Foo Fighters, Big Ten Inch Record, Aerosmith, Dream On, Aerosmith with Her, Sweet Emotion, Aerosmith, and Train Kept a Rollin', Aerosmith and Alicia Cooper and Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp, that's interesting. Um, is there any way we can see this? Because that night sounds pretty freaking amazing. And I'm really curious. Like, what did Johnny Depp do? Uh, so I reported in the last episode that drummer Joey, or at least my last episode, that drummer Joey Kramer filed a lawsuit. And though Kramer joined the band on stage to accept the award, he did not play with the quintet due to the ongoing legal battle that left him suing his bandmates for excluding him from playing with them at Music Cares, Sunday Night's Grammy Awards, and the band's Las Vegas residency. I didn't know they had a residency. That's pretty freaking dope as well. Now on to new releases. On the eve of Grammy's weekend, nominee Lizzo drops the super deluxe of her Grammy-nominated Cause I Love You album, which won the Urban Contemporary Album Award. Calvin Harris, Love Regenerator. Latin artist Mike Towers, Easy Money, or Easy Money Baby. Alternative group Wolf Parade, Thin Mind. Country artist Chase Rice, The Album Part 1. The Witcher, music from the Netflix original series, Christian singer Torn Wells, Citizen of Heaven, and Radiohead's 1992 Drill EP was re-released. This week delivered new singles and albums from Calvin Harris, Megan Thee Stallion, Haley Williams, and more, but it was Harris who topped them all in Billboard's latest fan poll. The poll was published on Friday, January 24th, Harris's Love Regenerator EP brought in just over 26% of the votes. On to tours and festival news. Oklahoma's premier rock festival, Rocklahoma, will return this Memorial Day weekend with headlining sets from Slipknot, Five Finger Death Punch, and Stained from May 22nd to the 24th. Kendrick Lamar headlining Britain's BST Hyde Park Festival. Far by Far Festival made its inaugural debut Saturday, Saturday, January 18th and Sunday, January 19th at Empire Grand Oasis in Coachella Valley, California, a posh desert venue which is comprised of 35 acres of land. The show featured everything from exquisite waterfalls to breathtaking scenes of palm groves to a serene lake and, of course, some big-name artists. That sounds really amazing. Anderson Pack and the Free Nationals headlined on Saturday night while Mark Ronson, B2B, Q-Tip, and friends took the stage for the grand finale Sunday night. Other acts included Keytrata, Young the Giant, Sophie Tucker, and Kurt Vile, among others. All right, folk influence indie pop band National Parks are launching their own festival appearance in 2020 called Super Bloom Music Festival, April 25th at the OC Tanner Amphitheater at Zion National Park in the band's home state of Utah. Super Bloom Music Festival will feature a headlining set from the National Parks along with performances from Joshua James, The Strike, Towers, The Federal Empire, Ellie Duke and Brothers, a special VIP pre-fest event on April 24th will include an exclusive campfire acoustic show. Now that sounds really awesome. The Governor's Ball has announced its 2020 lineup with headliners Tame Impala, Flume, and Vampire Weekend. Missy Elliott's appearance will also mark her first major NYC headlining show in over a decade. The three-day festival will take place from June 5th through the 7th at Randall's Island Park in New York with additional appearances from Solange, Stevie Nicks, Miley Cyrus, and Ellie Golding and more. All right, so we'll take a break and return with a little bit more festival tour news and some music history with Nipsey Hussle. Searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. 
There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Music Podcast. I'm your host, Galika Brown. Now, Dina Jane is ready to take on the world. After closing out 2019 with her first solo shows in select U.S. cities, the Bottled Up singer revealed plans for her 2020 Dina Jane World Tour on Wednesday, January 22nd. Tickets for the North American shows will be on sale to the general public starting on Friday, January 24th at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Dina Jane's website. With the wildfires damaging Australian wildlife, Dina Jane is donating $1 from all her ticket proceeds to the Global Wildfire Conservation Australian Wildfire Fund. Um, I believe that's $1 from each ticket. Not she's only going to give them $1. <laughs> Pearl Jam is also hitting the road in support of the new album Gigaton. Days before the album is released on March 27th, the band will perform shows throughout Canada with American dates to follow the album's release. Check out their new 12-track track list on their website or social pages. Stephen Malkmus has announced a new album titled Traditional Techniques and released the lead single Zion Man. Traditional Techniques will be released on March 6th. Malcolmus is touring behind the album in March and April. Tickets go on sale Friday, January 24th. The Pussycat Dolls reunited for the first time in a decade last November when they performed a melody of their old hits and debuted a new single, React, on UK's The X Factor Celebrity Final. The popular female quintet is also set for an official reunion tour this year after announcing the first wave of UK dates, according to Variety. I used to be down for um, Pussycat Dolls. What was that? Buttons? Loosen up my buttons, baby. I don't remember what that was my jam. And I think Snoop was on it. So, yeah, they did have some hits. I don't know if I'm, like, super excited about a reunion and... Definitely won't be buying tickets, but hey, kudos for them and for all y'all pussycat, <laughs> pussycat doll fans. I'm happy for you. Last month, My Chemical Romance reunited to play their first concert in seven years, and now the band is apparently gearing up to perform at least one more reunion show. On Sunday, January 19th, the band unveiled a cryptic video featuring haunting new music from the group titled An Offering. The video also hints at what appears to be another MCR reunion show and their first in the UK since reuniting. The close of the video features a caption reading, My Chemical Romance, Stadium MK, June 20th, 2020, Milton Keynes, United Kingdom. My Chemical Romance officially broke up in 2013, releasing four albums across their 12-year run. After months of speculation, the band finally announced their reunion in October 2019, scheduled for 2020. Now, with the Grammys tribute and his posthumous Grammy wins, I thought it would be fitting to do a history lesson on Nipsey Hussle. Earning a Grammy nomination for his critically acclaimed 2018 debut, Victory Lap, Nipsey Hussle was at the peak of his career when he was murdered a year later in March 2019. Following his death, public outpouring helped push five of his efforts onto the Billboard 200 and also resulted in the renaming of an intersection of Slauson and Crenshaw in honor of the fallen rapper. 
He adapted his stage name from iconic black comedian actor Nipsey Russell. Slauson bred Aramis Acidom built an early following that made his rap style reminiscent of Snoop Dogg and Ice T. Nip was once a full fledged member of one of the most notorious subsections of the Crips gang. Hustle was a man of the streets and became a quick mixtape favorite in the late 2000s with his gritty street observations. Starting with Sloss and Boy in 2005, the rapper issued a trio of Bullets Ain't Got No Name volumes in 2008 and 2009 before moving on to the Marathon and its sequel in 2011. His eighth official mixtape, Crenshaw, arrived in 2013. Drawing attention for its $100 price tag, it still broke into the top 40 of the Billboard Heat Seekers chart. Millbox Money was released on that last day of 2014 and featured Rick Ross and among many other respected street rappers. In 2016, Hustle teamed up with YG for the anthem FDT, F Donald Trump, which peaked at number 50 on the hot R&B and hip hop song charts. The following year, Hustle returned to his own material with Still, which rode a sample of Dr. Dre's Still Dre. That same year, he issued Sloss and Boy Volume 2, featuring Mozzie, Young Thug, Dave East, Snoop Dogg, Young Dolph, and more. A collaborative effort with Bino Redu, No Pressure, arrived before the year's end. In early 2018, Hustle issued his official debut full-length victory lap which featured guests like YG, Puff Daddy, Kendrick Lamar, The Dream, CeeLo Green, and more. The set debuted in the top five of the Billboard 200 and was later nominated for Best Rap Album at the 61st Grammy Awards. The critically acclaimed set would be his only official album release. On March 31st, 2019, Hustle was gunned down outside his Marathon clothing store in Los Angeles. He was 33 years old. Following a significant public outpouring for the fallen rapper, including condolences sent from President Barack Obama, The Marathon, Crenshaw, Mailbox Money, and Sloss and Boy Volume 2 all made their debuts on the U.S. album chart, while Victory Lap returned to the Billboard 200, peaking at number two. To honor Hustle's contributions to the community, the city announced that the intersection of Slauson Avenue and Crenshaw Boulevard would be named Aramis Nipsey Hustle Asidam Square. In January 2020, Hustle's legacy was honored with a tribute at the 62nd Grammy Awards, where he also received the posthumous nominations, which resulted in two wins. You know, my heart... It's still sad over Nipsey's passing and just the tragic way that his life was taken. It's one thing to have an accident. Like, I don't know. I mean, just thinking about Kobe and Nipsey and just Sunday was just a really heavy and just like RIP night. And as tragic as is Kobe's passing and his daughter's passing and, and everyone that was on board. That was an accident. And it's, I think it's a little bit, just a little bit easier to wrap my head around a, a, a an accident versus someone murdering another human being. Just blatantly taking someone's life away with no regard. Just, there's video footage of it. We literally saw... Nipsey Hussle get gunned down. And it wasn't enough that, like, homie shot um, Nip and Nip went down and, like, homie just ran off. I don't don't even really want to say his name. But nah, it was reported that, like, Nip had said something like, you got me. And dude comes back and shoots him. And that was the final, that was the death bullet. (sighs) But I loved Nip. I totally respect him. Um, there's, there's no replacing him. And that's the sad thing. He was doing so much for his community. He was doing things that nationally other communities could replicate. And I, to some, to some degree, I know things are still going on. There's still 
uh, the neighborhood NIP foundation that the money from his um, clothing line proceeds are going to go to. But nothing is ever really the same as when the creator, the, the heart of it, is living and putting their heart into it. And I just pray that all of his efforts continue. I pray for the Marathon clothing line. I pray for Lauren, for his grandmother, his mother, his, his entire family, everyone who's still trying to keep this marathon going because, yes, the marathon continues And my prayer is that it continues forever. I definitely appreciate your time. Thanks for spending time with me on this special Grammys episode. Thank you for listening to the GSMC Music Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. If you liked what you heard, subscribe to our podcast. And if you feel compelled, write a review. Until next time, I'm Gilika Brown, the music lover constantly seeking positive music. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to music. From sports to entertainment and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.